through a shower of pyrotechnics, it was the hometown Broncos taking the field as they get set to do battle with the Cleveland Browns. On first and ten, Mayfield, this pass complete to Higgins. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. To throw again on second down. Mayfield, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Demetrius Harris, the intended target, and that'll make it third down. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Mayfield to throw it. They'll let it go deep for Beckham. He's got a man complete. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Odell Beckham, 71 yards. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Extra point by Seibert, up and good, and it's now a 7-0 game. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This one taken from the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Broncos offense set to get the football again. I want to go back to that loss they had to the Colts in week eight because it was Adam Vinatieri who kicked a field goal late to beat them. And that is now three losses for Denver this year on field goals in the final 30 seconds. So, yes, the two and six record doesn't look good, but they got to be saying, man, we could have been, what would that be, five and three right now. And think about it this way. Adam Vinatieri missed an extra point earlier in the game, so he became the hero later. But the big thing that Denver's going to take away, they couldn't capitalize on Colts' penalties that extended drives. They had to settle for two short field goals in the first half. And you and I both know what happens when you settle for field goals. In the NFL, they say it's a seven-point league. Most games within seven points of each other. You settle for field goals. It's a recipe for losing. And for Denver, that 2-6 and six record, their worst start since 2010. Next up, home to the Browns, and then they hit their open week. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. But Darius Taylor there in to make the tackle. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. So the shotgun snap to Allen. He'll find Lindsey here. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. Here we go, here we go. 60 out, Law. 
And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Two running plays, each lose a yard. They'll need to do much better now on third and 12. From the gun, it's Allen. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and that'll be incomplete. Now, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. Second-year punter Colby Wadman out there now for the Broncos as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The football back to the Cleveland Browns offense. And a three-game losing streak is the situation they're facing right now. As we noted earlier after the loss to New England, Charles, it's a 2-5 and five record. So let's look at the upcoming schedule at Denver. Then four the next five after that at home. So maybe a chance for them to right the ship a little bit. And not just at home. Look at who they're playing. Buffalo, yes, that'll be tough, but that's winnable at home. Pittsburgh struggling this year. Miami, that should be a win at Pittsburgh and home against Cincinnati. So if they have any thoughts, any designs on getting back into the playoff race, that stretch will be absolutely critical for them because they just got to take care of the football. Run it a little more with Nick Chubb, right? This roster is way better than what their record is. They're still learning how to win games. Now this is Callaway on the receiving end. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. 12 yards there and a first down. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit, and that's what he did on that play. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. And it's third down. Now the third leading rusher among rookies last year, it's Nick Chubb. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Not the result they were looking for there on third down. They end up taking a loss on the play. The only person happy now, the punter, gets to go out there and show mom that he gets to play in the game. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Let's go, 18, Gator. Let's go, D. Two. Here's a carry for the fullback. This is Andy Janovich. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And that's a nice gain by him on first down, picking up some key yardage. Come on, set, 30 base. Check, play. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. Let's go. Now Allen off the bootleg. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end, and it's third and short. Brings up third down and three yards to go. Let's 
So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. There's Freeman. And yeah, boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Fourth and short, partner. I mean, this would be a really risky call. Here we are in the first quarter. On they're your own side of the own field. On side of the field. But boy, what a tone setter that would be to go for it and get it, wouldn't it? You're gritty today. I like it. I'm feeling it. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And they won't get a chance to bring this one back. It goes out of bounds, go. back near their own 20. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 at their own 22. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. The tackle made by Todd Davis. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second and nine, Mayfield. Landry, the intended target, and it's third down. So many qualities coaches tick off when they talk about, hey, what was going to take to make an excellent quarterback? Accuracy has to rank near the top of every list. Talk about arm strength, that's great. Mobility, great, but you need that accuracy in there. That one well in front of his man. Yeah, now they got to face a big third down. On third down, Mayfield. Able to find Harris complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A pickup of 27, and they pick up the first down in the process. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 49-yard line. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. It's caught by OBJ. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. And a nice run to get him past the original line of scrimmage. A gain of seven. It's second and eight now. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Throwing on second and eight. Mayfield, that's taken in by Callaway. That one, a gain of 20 in a first down. It's a gain of 20. First down, Cleveland. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Certainly not what the offense wanted down here, going in the wrong direction. Yeah, well, look who got involved. I mean, when you got a strong safety who can drop into the box, never needs an invitation to be one of those guys in run defense, does he? Wakes up every morning just a little bit ticked off. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. 
The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He finds Beckham complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. They'll run with Chubb. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. It's second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. Here's Mayfield. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Demetrius Harris there to make the grab. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to draw up those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. They worked out for six. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Off the bootleg, Allen. Oh, Allen cannot get away, and down he goes. In for the sack, Myers Garrett. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. Been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now Allen. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Sheldon Richardson in there to drop him and sacks on first and second downs. Now leads to a third and long. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. And he's going to be taken down. Sacked back at the two. Miles Garrett picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. And he's able to get it out of there. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and ten. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here, that could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But this is the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 to nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how have we, how we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Rush coming, and he's taken down. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it. It's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. To throw, Mayfield. Now Mayfield lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And this is going to be brought back for a Denver touchdown. 
And Charles, look at the big fella. What a rumble that was. Not only to scoop it, but then take it the rest of the way for the touchdown. And now you know they're going to have to hear about it from now on. The defensive backs, he's going to want to run with them, do their drills, the whole deal. He thinks he's the pace setter now. It doesn't matter what happens in practice this week. He's smiling. Extra point from McManus is good. And that'll make our score 14-7. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They'll be looking to make amends for the events of a moment ago. A fumble return for six points. You absolutely have to protect the football. That's got to be priority number one because margin for error is starting to slip away. Now it's down to a one-score game. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 at their own 26. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Throwing Mayfield. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The Browns on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field. And I don't think he got there. No gain on the play there. And it'll bring up fourth down. Yes, it's the first half, but we'll see if that stuff there on third and one comes back to haunt him. I hope you don't mind, but it's not going to stop me from putting a check mark next to this play. Let's look back as this game progresses and see if this is one of the key plays in the game, even though it occurred early. They decide against going for it on fourth and one, maybe to the dismay of their offense, but hey, a nice consolation prize down inside the five. Nice consolation prize indeed. So maybe the offense is upset, but they show confidence in their defense by punting it away. Yeah. 90 They'll start on the ground with Lindsey. Well, that gives them a little room, but not much. A gain of two to the five. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Back to the ground, this time with Freeman. And he'll find a little space. He gets us up near the 10. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Broncos on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. That's taken it around the 40. 
We'll call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Mayfield now from the 50. He'll get that complete to the tight end, Harris. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Three down, three down. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. And his throw here is incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. Now Mayfield. It's caught. Beckham. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Now a play fake here on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. Vaughn Miller able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. From the gun, Mayfield. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Odell Beckham with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Extra point by Seibert up and good. And it's now 21-7.
Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Allen now to throw again. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 yards there and a first down. Fant, the first round pick out of Iowa, taken 20th overall, second tight end taken in the draft. Uh, amazingly, the second Iowa tight end taken in the draft is teammate TJ Hawkinson, eighth overall. He was selected by the Lions, but Noah Fant really wowed everyone in Indianapolis at the Combine and now trying to parlay that into an impressive NFL career. Give the tackle there to Morgan Burnett. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Deshaun Hamilton, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Allen going to throw. Screen pass to Lindsey. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Allen to throw it. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. This quarterback now, four out of ten throwing the ball in this first half, but he's got a first down here. So the shotgun snap to Allen. Got a man, that's complete to Hamilton. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. To the air, Allen. This one complete to the running back, Lindsey. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. 
And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Again, they'll throw with Allen. Yeah, this is caught by Sutton. Touchdown, Broncos. Cortland Sutton there to make the grab as his guys are back within a single score. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. McManus's point after is good, and they're back within a touchdown at After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well. So that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines, hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. Well, here's a good way to kick off a drive, complete over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Hey, One play hey. has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. That one is caught by Hunt. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Mayfield to throw it. He finds his target, Beckham. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Talk about a big first half. Already has the two touchdowns, adding to his receiving total there and picking up the first down. He's coming off the line so fast. I think he's intimidating the defensive backs with his explosiveness, and he's chipping away at their confidence. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Antonio Callaway, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. And again, it's Mayfield. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Vaughn Miller able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half.
So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This from 54 yards away. He's got the leg, but it's no good. He missed it right, and this score will stay right where it is. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Second half starts with a run by Lindsey, and he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing, but with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Here's second and seven now from the 28. 65. Allen throwing over the middle it's incomplete. Cortland Sutton is the man he was looking for. Third down here. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Allen now looks to throw. Got a man. It's Brown. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, it's Allen. Oh, Allen cannot get away, and down he goes. Miles Garrett getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DN. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Denzel Ward right there in coverage to get the hand in. But has not been the best game for him, but he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete. But you're right, hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. It's a 44-yard punt, just three on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They run again on first down, Chubb. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They go with Chubb on second down. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Set. 
A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Adam Gatsis, the Aussie, with a sack. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. The drive will commence with a run by Lindsey. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. 12 yards there on a first down. Well, we talked about Philip Lindsay so much last year, but it bears repeating. Undrafted in 2018, the Broncos would sign him in May, and that was a good decision. He would have a 1,000-yard season, nine touchdowns en route to a Pro Bowl appearance. So from undrafted to playing in the Pro Bowl in 10 months, that's pretty clean living for Philip Lindsay. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here we go. 18, Gator. Let's go. Here we go. Five. On second down, it's Lindsey. Wiggles free. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Allen operating from the gun. And that is incomplete. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. The Broncos send out their punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Fair catch taken right at the 10-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. Here's Mayfield. It's brought in by Harris. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to it. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. Chubb on the counter. And he will find his way forward to about the 23-yard line. Derek Wolf there on the tackle. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. On second and nine, Mayfield. 
Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Von Miller, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive, and after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. Mayfield in this Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. And he completes it to Hunt. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. Mayfield on first down. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Mayfield now. That's complete to his tight end, Seals Jones. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. On third down, Mayfield. He's got an open man. He completes it to Callaway. And out across midfield, down to the 45. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Chubb with a carry on first down. It's not going to yield much, maybe a yard. It's second down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. And he'll be down close to the first down marker as he gets this to the Broncos 37. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. A run for Nick Chubb. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort but it's well short, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, that one hurts a bit. That was a golden opportunity to possibly put this one on ice, but he comes up empty. And how big of a miss might that turn out to be? Stay tuned. There's still time left on the clock. This could be critical. Still a one-score game. Had he hit that, it would have been two scores. To throw, it's Allen. Jeff Hireman, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Ready, ready. And here's Allen. Going to throw again. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. The 
Broncos on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and ten. From the gun, Allen. He'll find Lindsey here. The Broncos send out their punter now. He's been terrific so far. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that had far too much air under it. It's out of the back of the end zone, and the football will come out to the 20-yard line. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. Now, they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of the team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if you picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right, if it's college football, you want to make second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the gun, Mayfield. And he's got the hook up to Landry. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. On the carry, it's Chubb. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Now that's a nice play. <laughs> Got me fired up, partner. But can they do it back-to-back -back plays? All the training that you go through as a defense for these situations, when you have to get the ball back, Everything you go through, holding up the runner, raking at the football, getting to the passer, knocking it out of his hands, whatever way, they have to get the ball back. Now can they stand tall again for a huge fourth quarter stop? Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Taking it about the 16. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Second and 10 now from the 27. Hey, we got to get to the ball, team. We got to get to the ball. Let's keep moving. Convert. Now Allen to throw. Throwing again. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Over with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Allen off the play fake. 
Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Olivier Vernon coming in with some force for the sack that time. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And that will hit and continue on out of bounds. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. On first and ten, Mayfield. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to his tight end, David Njoku. That'll bring up second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Mayfield from the gun on third down. Able to find Harris complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 21 yards there on third down. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Out of the gun, they run it with Hunt. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. Outside handoff to the right side. If you're a running back, you love getting the ball early, so you have vision to see what's happening in front of you. Right tackle, like set call. Big play for him, but don't forget about the guys you always tell me on the backside sealing off. When they talk about cutoff blocks, making sure no one can leak from the backside that can run a play down. Yeah, nobody leaked. Big play. Here we go. Here we go. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. As we get late in this one, is altitude a factor for a visiting team in Denver? Is that something that's overplayed? No, it's real. And I know a lot of the visiting teams like to downplay it because they don't want to get into the heads of their players. But you can't avoid it. As soon as you get to the locker room, you get to the stadium, they always post it in there. Welcome to Denver. Altitude 5,280 feet. The air is rare. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. They may be snapping a ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. Seibert's kick is good. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, bled a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us.
After the made field goal, Seibert back out there to kick it away. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So the Broncos coming out now. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Here's Allen on first and ten. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Another try after the first down sack. Allen in trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Larry Ogunjobi in for the sack. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. So they're going for it, and here's Allen. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And no, it's incomplete. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And now, boy, the ball's going to go over on downs here inside the 10-yard line. And what can they do here on second and goal? Three red zone trips so far have yielded two touchdowns and a field goal. Mayfield to throw it. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. Second down and goal. Mayfield toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Ricky Seals-Jones, the intended receiver, but now it's third and goal. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Demetrius Harris, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Following the touchdown, here's Seibert now to kick it off. This one taken just inside the 10. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. 
And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. A gain of six there on first. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And that is incomplete here. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You, you figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here. You've held a team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. You got nothing. <laughs> to throw again. Allen. Trying for Brown and it's intercepted. It's TJ Carey who picked it. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and ten at their own 42. Mayfield with a quick fire to Landry. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. Watch QB drop! Watch QB drop! Throwing on second down, Mayfield. That's taken in by Callaway. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. On the ground, it's Chubb. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. On first down. It's Hunt, and he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two, and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Chubb. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. And again, it's Chubb. And yeah, that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Here's Austin Seibert now for the Browns field goal. This will be, let's see, 38 yards out. Seibert. 
Seibert able to knock this one through. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? After the made field goal, Seibert back out there to kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And coming out now, the Broncos. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Yeah. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. And Denver getting set to take the field. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance Ready? now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Throwing now is Allen. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. A little check down to Lindsey. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Allen again. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. And again, it's Allen. He completes this to Sutton. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Looking for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. 
They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was it all came together in the second half and no points were allowed that's a great way to close them out so that'll just about do it for charles davis i'm brandon gordon you've been watching the nfl on ea sports for more log on to easports.com enjoy the rest of your afternoon everyone